I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I blessing of Abraham. Hello everybody, my name is David Weeder, and this is the Covenant Living Broadcast. Glory to God. Welcome. Welcome. Come on in. Grab a chair. Grab some coffee or a cup of tea or something. Get your Bible and notebook. You're going to want to take some very detailed notes today. We, uh, we set the stage last week, really the last two weeks, building up to today's broadcast. So let me encourage you right now, <clears throat> today's broadcast and the message for today is not going to make nearly <laughs> as much sense if you don't get what's gone before it. So you need to go back and you need to listen to both last week and the week before as we're building up to the, 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 the deep things in the Word of God that we're going to be discussing today. Also, I want you to listen very accurately today. And I want you to, to be um, very attentive so that you don't think I say something I don't say because it's going to be very specific and we're going to have a lot of fun with it. And by the end of today, you are going to be at a place that you have not been before. And it's a good, good thing. Glory to God. Let's start off with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your word with awesome respect honor. We place your word first place in our lives. We believe the word of the living God. We believe that we can do what it says we can do. And we believe that we are who you say we are in your word. We take it, we receive it, we believe it, and we press into the Holy Spirit to teach us. He is the teacher of the church. Teach us the working knowledge of the things that we're looking at today. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. We're going to have a good time. We are going to go back to what we ended with last week as a refresher. We talked about, uh, you know, Romans chapter 12 says that we're not conformed to this world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. And then Romans chapter 8 verses 28 and 29 says that we are to be conformed to the image of his dear son. But then we went to uh, John chapter 15 because we, need, we needed to wind up last broadcast and we definitely need to start this broadcast making something perfectly clear. So turn over in your Bibles to John chapter 15 with me and we're going to read a couple verses here. John chapter 15 and we're going to start with verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. Now, that word abide, as we talked about, means live. It's not an occasional pass through. It's not a stop in on Sunday and Wednesday, maybe. You've got to live here for this verse to apply. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. Now this is a key phrase right here. For without me, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, I can do nothing. Without Jesus, we can do nothing. <laughs> you got that now? All right. 
If a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that we bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. So, you know, we have a, you know, we have an admonition and a warning. Without Jesus, we can do nothing and bear no fruit. But yet he goes ahead and tells us that the Father is glorified when we bear much fruit. So don't forget Matthew chapter 19 where it says, With God all things are possible. So, who you with? Make sure you abide in the vine. And all things that we talk about today can be experienced to their utmost. Now, as a second witness, go on over with me uh, to the book of Acts. And we are going to look at chapter 17 in the book of Acts. Remember the vine and the branches. Abide in the vine. And another way of saying that is found in Acts chapter 17, verse 28. For in him, there we are, in him. That's, that's where we is. <laughs> For in him we live, abide, got it? We live and move and have our being. Glory to God. That's where we're coming from. That's the foundation. Everything we're going to talk about today launches from there. If you're not there, forget the rest of today. Okay? You got it? All right, good. Now, we talked about last week, we went to Romans chapter 12 and we talked about you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You don't be conformed to the world. What are you supposed to be conformed to? The image of Jesus, the image of his son, so that he could be the firstborn of among many brethren. All right, so let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form, be conformed to the image, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, lest you think that there's some kind of a misunderstanding there. Let me read to you. Got to find it first. Let me read to you the definition of the Greek word for mind and equal. Now, you remember a couple weeks ago, we talked considerably about understanding and knowledge and how to put the pieces together. All right, so in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay, so that word mind means to exercise the mind, to have the same opinion as, <clears throat> to be like-minded, to be mentally disposed to, and to set your affections on and it refers to your cognitive faculties, to be of the same opinion. Let's plug that one in there and see what that verse says. Let this same opinion be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That word equal confers the idea of being the same both in amount and kind 
or type. So let this same opinion be in your mental faculties and thoughts that was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be exactly the same in kind and amount as God himself. I didn't say that. The Bible said that. Now, I told you, I told you we're going to be going into some deep meat <laughs> in this broadcast. And so instead of out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, we're going to, we're going to go through 10 because you've got to see this and you've got to see that it's not my opinion. It's not anybody else's opinion, except it is the opinion of God Almighty as he outlined it in the word of God. So. That was the first one. Let this mind be in you. Be of the same opinion as Jesus. Got it? All right. Now we're going to go over to Colossians. One book to the right. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. <clears throat> Well, let's back up to verse, uh, verse 9. Lie not one to another. So you know we're not lying here. He's about, he just said, don't lie one to another. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Man, you talk about a power-packed verse in light of what we've studied. Look at that. Renewed. The renewing of the mind. Romans chapter 12. In the knowledge. After the image. Conformed to the image. Romans chapter 8. You see how... Now, see? Now we're going back to two weeks ago where we're talking about putting the pieces together. Understanding. The, the sower sows the word. It was sown in the heart. But if it wasn't understood, the thief comes to take it. But now we're putting the pieces together on the understanding of how this process works. Now, let's go back and set this up from the beginning. Glory to God. Go to Genesis chapter 1. That's right near the beginning. Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse 26. And I'm going to read it. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and read it out of the Amplified Classic version. Just because I like the, uh, the expansion and the, and the translation of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God said, God said this. I didn't say this. God said this. Let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Make mankind in our image, after our likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the beasts, over all the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So man was created in the God class of beings. In Psalms, one of the angels records one of the angels, who is man? <laughs> he was made in the God class. Now, that was... Genesis chapter 1, though, that was before the fall, right? Go with me over to John chapter 10. Let's see what Jesus has to say about it. Jesus is our example in everything. Red words win. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, John chapter 10. And let's look at, well, let's start in verse 30, because this is what got, got him stirred up. Jesus said, I and my father are one. Then <laughs> the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Riled him up, didn't it? 
Jesus answered them, Many good words have I showed you from my Father. For which of those words do you stone me? The Jews answered them, saying, For a good work we stone you not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Now, if you know, it's kind of like all the people that equate with something that Judas said. I don't want to be caught saying the same thing that these guys said. Okay, so let's go and see what Jesus had to say about it. And Jesus answered, I don't think you understood me right. You don't understand what I meant. You, you got to hear my heart here. That's, that's not really what I meant when I said that. No, that's not what Jesus said at all. He made no excuses for it. He didn't mince words. He simply said, is it not written in your law? I have said... You are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified, we're the sanctified ones, and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God? Well, who are we? We're the children of God. Now, Let's go back and see what Jesus was talking about. Go with me to Psalm chapter 82. Psalms chapter 82. And you always have to look to see what, you know, who scriptures are written to. Now, does this written, does this apply to us? Well, if you look down in Psalm 82, we're going to read the whole, the whole chapter. But first, go down and read. Uh, verse 6, I have said, this is the meat of the, the crux of the matter anyway, this is the verse that Jesus was talking about. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Well, none of them were children of the Most High at the time. That didn't come until Jesus went to the cross. We're children, they were servants. So this is who is being addressed. God stands, verse 1, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? And then it goes on down. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. And it goes on and it keeps addresses. And like I said, verse 6. I have said, you are gods. Now, I've heard a lot of people say about Psalm 82, particularly, oh, you know, he was talking about judges. He was calling judges gods. It doesn't apply to anybody else. Well, um, they weren't judges, the Jews that Jesus was talking about, but yet he used this verse. Uh-huh. You getting it? Come on. Come on. Come on. I have said, ye are gods. We saw we were created in the God class before the fall. Jesus, through the tremendous price he paid, everything he did on the cross in the pit of hell and when he rose again, restored us to our rightful place in the family. Glory to God. We're not done yet, though. Don't think we're just settling for a few witnesses. Go over to Psalms chapter 136, and this will make a lot more sense now to you when you read these things through the rest of the, the scriptures. Psalms 136 verse 2. And you'll see, you stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Oh, wait a minute. Did I get the wrong? Uh, let me look at my notes here. I've got to make sure everything's right here. Psalm 136, verse 2. Psalm. Oh, see, there's the problem, right? You've got to be in the right chapter. You know it? Psalm 136. There we go. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. Well, who's the lords he's Lord over? That'd be us. We've been made unto our God, kings and priests, lords and gods. We're in the God class of creatures. Got to renew your mind. You got to transform 
by the renewing of your mind to who you are in Christ. Remember the foundation in the vine. In him we live and move and have our being. Now, go on over to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. And we see again in verse 15, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the king of of kings, the Lord of lords. Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. Not revelations. It is the revelation of Jesus. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is Lord of lords, King of kings. And they that are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. Glory to God. Have we made the point? He's King of kings. He's Lord of lords. And He is God of gods. We're not done yet. Look with me at 1 Peter chapter 1. Now, something interesting about a vine and a branch. If you do an analysis of a vine and a branch, do you know what you'll find when you go subatomic? You will find that the DNA of the branch is identical to the DNA of the vine, which fits with 1 Peter chapter 1. And let's look at, oh my goodness, we could just back up the whole way here. My, 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 my. Well, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just cut to the meat of it here or we're going to get another broadcast. Okay, uh, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. We were born again of the seed of the word of God. Does that remind you of anybody? The word oh, became flesh and dwelt among men. He's our brother, firstborn among many brethren, and that's what we're supposed to be conforming to, understanding, putting the pieces together of how it works. We have the same DNA as God himself and Jesus the Son. We are literally a part of the family. We were recreated in the God class. We got the Garden of Eden back. Glory to God. Are you still sitting there? You ought to be running around. The God class of creatures. <laughs> That's why in the second book of Peter, he goes on and spells it out even further. Oh, uh, let's see. We could just read the whole book, but we'll start... Uh, verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto us <clears throat> all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Now, how can he give us something that pertains unto godliness if we're not gods? Can't be. Anyway, I digress. No, I don't really. All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge. We're, <laughs> we're back to knowledge and understanding. We're learning how to put the pieces together through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue or power, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partaker of the divine God 
nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You cannot have the nature of a God without being one. You cannot have the nature of a God without being one. Go back to the foundation. It only works in Christ Jesus. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in whom we live and move and have our being. Glory to God. All right. Now, go to Ephesians 1 real quick. We, we talked about that last week or the week before. We looked in Ephesians chapter 1 about our authority. It was the week before, I believe. And our, where our seating is in Christ Jesus, in heavenly places, we're sitting at the right hand of God in Christ because we belong there, because he's made us to be there. But look at verse 17 at how we're supposed to operate. How do we get there? How do we function in that place? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You've got to renew your mind to who you are. If you think of yourself as a just a, I'm just a forgiven sinner, you'll act like a sinner that's barely getting by, but that's not who you are. And it completely controls how, what degree of success you experience in this life. And the understanding of that is what keeps Satan from stealing the word out of your life and just running roughshod over you. So how do we do it? Joshua 1.8 Meditate in my word day and night. Then you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success because you know who you are. Meditate who you are. Go back over, look at these scriptures. Go over them, meditate them, read them, mutter them, say them, get them inside you, get working knowledge of them. Put the pieces together. Live there, live in Jesus. It doesn't work. If you separate yourself from the vine, go back, listen to the last three messages just like one message and get it all. Until next time, this is David Weir reminding you that God loves you. He's always for you, never against you. Lynn and I love you and Jesus is Lord. Thank you partners and friends for helping make these broadcasts possible. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, be sure to follow us on Instagram, and you can also listen to our broadcasts on iTunes. Contact us at davidweeder.org or call us at 1-800-988-5380 to send praise reports, request prayer, or for more information about our ministry and how to become a partner.